Hi, I'm Ray Young. I'm an emeritus professor from the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And today I'm going to continue my presentations on essential oils and perfumes, the basic. And today's presentation will be on the characteristic of odorants from animal sources. Uh, in the previous lectures, we've discussed uh, the essential oils and odorants from plant blossoms, leaves, roots and seeds, woody material, and plant exudates. And we'll be con we continue on with the animal sources today. There are a variety of animal sources that, we, that have been utilized mainly historically for perfumery. The sperm whale ambergus, American beaver castorum, the civet, a cat-like uh, animal, the civet musk, rock hydrax, hydracium, honeybees such as in honeycomb, and the Asian musk deer, the deer musk. These scents are very highly valuable, valued and produce a remarkable effect on the other ingredients in the, perf in, in the perfume. And they have been very prized throughout history. They range from mysterious indigestibles such as the massive sperm whale uh, regurgitation from the, the whale to the hardened poop of the tiny hydrix. At full strengths, these, these, these scents are actually might quite nauseating to most people, but on dilution they reveal an incredible beauty and delicacy. They have a remarkable effect on other ingredients in the perfume. And a, a little how, how a pinch of salt can make a dish sing. But let's look at these individually now. Uh, the ambergris, as I mentioned, is the regurgitation from the uh, stomach and intestines of sperm whales. This material is produced we think because of the irritation created by indigestible elements that the whale eats, such as the beaks of cuttlefish. In the fresh state, it's a stinking mass, but it's a soft, dense, jet black, and outside dark brown. But as it ages, it becomes porous and faintly uh, sweet-smelling. Uh, the finest ambergris develops an incredibly lovely, sweet, musky-type odor, very valuable in perfumes. It creates an exalting and shimmering effect on the entire perfume structure. Uh, however, it's becoming quite rare and hard to find. The odor pro profile is often described as marine, animalic, and, and sweet. Uh, castorum is obtained from the North American beaver, the odor sacs. Now, um, these odor sacs occur both in the male and female. And the problem here is that the beaver must be killed to, to harvest these castor sacs, uh, which are filled with this paste. It's a, it's a, the sacs are then smoked or dried in the sun, and they, the aroma uh, becomes a mellow smell of sweet, clean leather. So it's, it, it produces a leather-like uh, aroma. It, it contributes an erotic, spicy, ambery note to perfumes as well as providing the fixation, which many of these uh, uh, animalic odors do. It's, however, it's very pungent, and uh, it's oftentimes produced synthetically now because of the uh, inhumane treatment of the beavers. The next one I want to discuss is the uh, Asian musk deer, uh, the Siberian musk deer uh, also. Uh, this, these deers generally range only about two feet tall, uh, and th th they're, this musk is stored in a hairy pouch uh, in front of the penis. The dry gland is chopped into small piece, pieces and left in a high-strength alcohol, alcohol to mature for months and sometimes even, even years. It produces a very sweet, generous aromatic intensity and longevity, and it brings elegance and radiance to any perfume. Uh, composition and, and it's a great inc incomparable fixative. Um, <clears throat> because of the, uh, the, the way to obtain this, the prices have, have become staggering. Uh, and musk, musk chemists and perfume chemists have been trying to produce uh, synthetic musk, musks for many years and uh, generally now it's pretty much a synthetic material. However, uh, it's said to be that, that they're producing uh, humanely these uh, alpine musk deers in China, uh, which they are not sacrificing so much. At any rate, it's an excellent fixative and it's been a valuable component to perfumery for many years. The civet is another source of, 
of uh, animalic type perfumes. It's a cat-like structure, so it's related to the mongoose. And again, it's the odorous sacs uh, that, that create this, uh, this, this, uh, this odorant for the, uh, for, for perfumery. Uh, the, the sacs are in the, by the perineal glands in the civet. And it produces a buttery yellow waste, which uh, turns darker with age. Uh, the full, 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 full scent of it is actually quite fecal and nauseating, but when it, it's actually diluted, it has a radiant velvety floral scent, which gives uh, great effects to the perfume, smoothing out the rough patches and adds shimmer, diffusion, and warmth. Uh, it's mainly grown now in Ethiopia and Thailand, where they're trying to do a sustainable, humane development of the civet. Another one is the Hyracium, uh, which comes from the rock Hydrix, a uh, little animal almost like a guinea pig. Um, and basically, it's, it's the excrete from the, these animals, which they tend to urinate and excrete in the same location, so that they actually, uh, these uh, excretements petrify over time. And then they're actually mined out, so this, the animal is not sacrificed in the process. Um, they, they, they can be up to 80 in a colony, so they produce a large quantity of this, but it's, been, but it's being mined regularly, and so it's disappearing as well. Uh, it's a dark, oily material, uh, and there is no harm to the species, as I mentioned, and it gives a great uh, animalistic, central, deep note, earthy, rich, and resinous. Honeybees also produce a, a nice aroma which can be extracted. The, the, both the honey and the honeycomb can be extracted with alcohol to produce a, a nice sweet scent of the honey. Uh, it's sort of reminiscent of sweet hay and cured tobacco when you get this type of uh, essence from the, the honey. So let me just summarize how I've discussed this. The animal odorants are obtained from a variety of species and have very unique aromas. Um, many of the odorants are obtained from an animals have excellent fixative properties and serve as a, a great base note and create a balanced, uh, you know, sparkling perfume. However, these animal sources are certainly controversial because it involves killing of the animal in many cases. Uh, and it, it, it also it's been uh, verified that it's been some cruel treatment to the animals, so it's not very, uh, very utilized to a great extent anymore. But it, progress has been made for making uh, sustainable uh, development and humane methods for these materials. Um, that completes my discussion of the essential oils and odorants. Of course, odorants are the term used for the from the animal sources. And uh, for the, my next lecture, I'm going to be talking about the structure and composition of perfumes. Thank you.